the world is neither good nor bad is a knife a sharp double edged knife is it good or is it bad well it's neither good nor bad in the hands of a surgeon it is a means of saving lives in the hands of a decoit it is a means of taking lives its usage is what makes the difference similarly arjun karm is not good or bad the intent is what decides the final result so arjun those karma yogis who engage in karm but at the same time learn to be detached from the fruits of their karm and this message of detaching from the fruits of results is so relevant to all of us because in the modern day world all executives are subject to stress how do we control stress bhagavad gita shloka chanting is followed by translation and commentary by swami mukundananda यस्विंद्रियाणि मनसा नियम यार भतेर्जुन कर्मेंद्रिय कर्मयोगम असक्तस्त विशिष्यते बट दोस कर्म योगीस हु कंट्रोल देयर नॉलेज सेंसेस विद द माइंड ओ अर्जुन and engage the working senses in working without attachment are certainly superior having shown his lack of respect for false renunciation shri krishna shows his preference by saying this is superior what karma yog so in karma yog you are engaging your working senses and your knowledge senses in work you are performing your work but internally you are endeavoring for yog any work results in bondage in the law of karma bad work naturally binds to bad reactions but even good work binds us to good reactions the result of good work is material prosperity or elevation to the celestial abode swarg so good and bad works both become binding however if we could make a little correction in these works then binding work gets transformed into liberating work you still keep doing work but the end result is very different just like arjun was a warrior before hearing the gita after being enlightened with the knowledge of the gita he was still a warrior there was no external difference in what he was doing however now his work was liberating it was a means of enlightenment why the transformation took place from within earlier arjun's intent was i need to fight to subdue my enemies and to win glory and the opulence of the throne of hastinapur and live in comfort and luxury all my life his motivation was selfish hearing the bhagavad gita his motivation changed this is not my goal 
Nevertheless, let me keep doing it as my duty because Lord Krishna wants me to. So he was doing it. But yet his mind was continually engaged in the Lord. Sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara satatam kirtayanto maam tesham nityabhyuktanaham and he was doing it as an an offering to the lord so william shakespeare the great bard of england he said there is nothing good or bad in this world thinking makes it so the world is neither good nor bad is let us say a knife a sharp double edged knife is it good or is it bad well it's neither good nor bad in the hands of a surgeon it is a means of saving lives in the hands of a decoyet it is a means of taking lives is a gun good or bad this is a question for the gun lobby i am not interfering in politics i don't get into it but the argument of some is that well you know it it's you can't say a gun is bad in some cases it is good in proper hands that's why you need a license to use it so the gun in itself is neither good or bad so in this world nothing is good or bad shakespeare possessed a lot of wisdom and insight into the world and human thinking is this microphone good or bad as somebody would say you know swami ji the the youngsters they waste their time in dj's etc singing through the night it's so terrible what an awful invention Well right now you are hearing the discourse through this microphone SM58 so the microphone is not good or bad its usage is what makes the difference similarly arjun karm is not good or bad the intent is what decides the final result so arjun those karma yogis who engage in karm but at the same time learn to be detached from the fruits of their karma such karma yogis are superior to false renunciants and this message of detaching from results is so relevant to all of us because in the modern day world all executives are subject to stress one of the biggest problems is stress how do we control stress now what is the reason behind even students come to me regularly swami ji my exams are coming up i'm totally stressed out i'm feeling nervous well the fact that exams are coming is no reason to be nervous what is making you nervous is not the exams what is making you nervous is your attachment to the results i must get so much what will happen if i don't get now the mind is contemplating the results and when the results are the focus our application on the efforts is naturally suffering if we could release this attachment to the results we would could apply all our intellectual and mental faculties on the effort and the results would naturally be secured but when the results are hovering over the mind then our efforts are suffering one person went and asked his guruji guruji by doing sadhana in this manner how quickly will i reach the goal he said well you know it could be about 5 years so guruji if i keep my results in mind and try harder 
How long will it take? Guruji said 10 years. <laughs> because your mental faculties, intellectual faculties will be otherwise engaged. So what causes nervousness is not the enormity of work in front of us, but our attachment to the results. And if that attachment can be given up, then work becomes a breeze. God only wants us to do our best in the present. And the famous verse of the Bhagavad Gita, which every Indian knows, Karmanne vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana Arjun, you have the right to perform your duty. But do not be attached to the results. They are not for your pleasure in any case. And don't consider yourself to be the doer. Just like people play golf. And the focus is all right, how many? How many strokes? It's always playing with the results in mind. So they are not enjoying their game. It's always about results. And supposing they could just put the results aside, forget it. Let me focus on hitting, enjoying my shot right now. So if you are not attached to results and you just enjoy hitting that, you'll have the most enjoyable game of golf. And that is the science of work. Focus on your effort in the present. Work will become easy. One clock maker, he made a grandfather clock. And he was about to put it in action when he heard a groan. He said, where did this groan come from? So the pendulum started speaking. It said, I was thinking of my life ahead of me. I need to tick tock millions of times. The clockmaker said, don't focus on that. Simply take it one tick tock at a time. So the pendulum followed the advice and it would just do one tick tock and it's been doing that for many, many years. Similarly, if we become detached to results, we focus totally on our efforts. And that detachment lays the ground for Karma Yoga. Now this Karma Yoga will not come about merely by karma. You will have to cultivate knowledge alongside. Because how do you become detached? It's easy to say. Swamiji, you say become detached. You don't know how it is in family life with children, wife, husband, etc. Easier said than done. And that is why to do anything practically, theoretical knowledge is of vital importance. And that is what Sri Krishna had told Arjun at the end of the second chapter which confused him. He did not mean Arjun, you just sit in the library and you'll become enlightened. He said, to be a true karma yogi, you will need this knowledge. So he continues explaining the science of work. for being a part of the Gita Gyan Yagya, which is our humble attempt to spread the divine knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. Please subscribe to our channel 